welcome to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year 2005. Basically, what we've got here is a cross between a pub quiz and the National Lottery. It's like a pub quiz, because I'm going to be asking our celebrity teams and you at home lots of questions about the year gone by. And it's like the National Lottery, because none of you are going to win anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's meet tonight's teams. Team one, from The X Factor, Sharon Osbourne. And from everything else, Jonathan Ross. <laughs> Team two from Broadway and the West End, it's the all-singing, all-dancing Denise Van Outen. And sitting next to her, from Peep Show, it's the all-blushing, all-stammering David Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, from the F word and a string of Michelin-starred restaurants, it's Gordon Ramsay. And from Wales, it's Rob Brydon. <laughs> Frankly, I cannot believe my luck. Lovely to have you all here this evening. I presume you've all got hilarious pub team names for your... Uh... Well, we haven't decided on one yet. I've got some suggestions. See if you like this. I was thinking either Wazzy Osborne... Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we could be the A-list because we are really A-list. Well, yeah. <laughs> so it's just number one, actually. I right. think we'll cover it all. Number one sounds like a wee-wee, though, doesn't it? Do you think? <laughs> all right. Let's That's go, what let's... I like about it. We'll go with the A-list. Is that yes. okay? Yes. A-list. Okay, we'll go with the A-list? Okay, yeah. no, that's absolutely yes. fine. A fine pub quiz team name. Thank you. Hmm, nice. Maybe the A-team, even. You could have the A-team, but you asked us, we gave you the answer. You want to give us your own one, why bother asking us? <laughs> Can you hear this, or do you need me to turn it up? <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to be this juvenile this early on? I'm not being juvenile. That's nice. I really don't know. <laughs> Denise Van Outen, David Mitchell, you look like you're on a, a blind date and you cannot believe your luck. <laughs> I, I didn't realise that was the arrangement, actually. That's, that's terrific. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Denise, what's your pub quiz name? Um, I was thinking uh, David Denise the Double Ds. Mm, which, which is funny, cos it means tits as well. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay and Rob Wright, do you have a team name? Yeah, we, we, we thought, can't cook, no need to, because I'm sat next to Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Close off the time. Yeah. So, have you all been paying attention this last year? We're about to find out. All you need to play along at home is a pen and a piece of paper. First up, it's January and February. It's a long time ago. So let me give you a few reminders. George Bush began his second term. He was very excited, because the second term is when they start sticking and colouring in. <laughs> Ellen MacArthur was made a dame after her three-month round-the-world voyage. I speak on behalf of the whole nation when I say she's a very brave little boy. <laughs> Seriously, though, three months round the world. Imagine the ironing she got home to. <laughs> At the Brit Awards, Joss Stone won Best Urban Act. She's from Devon. <laughs> There's lovely me homies drinking cider like it's your birthday. <laughs> OK, teams, and you at home, in memory of George Best, I think we should get the first round in as quickly as possible. <laughs> so, on to the questions. Question number one. Prince Harry caused a stir when a photo appeared of him dressed as a Nazi. What I want to know is, what was the theme of the fancy dress party? What was the theme, Vicky? You know? Did it embarrass your parents' night? <laughs> is, it, is it meet the descendants? <laughs> <laughs> Are we, are we in a royalist stronghold? I'm, I'm <laughs> it was. It was. Hold oh, on. No, no, don't, don't, if you know, write it down. Write it down. Oh, you it's it's in. something in inbreds. Now, something is... in inbreds. Yeah. Well, <laughs> mutants. Mutants. Mutants <laughs> and inbreds. It's not a very common theme for a party. Mutants <laughs> <laughs> and inbreds. So they all sit around saying, we've, we've done tarts and vicars, let's do mutants and inbreds. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going to a party at your place, Sharon. It's fabulous, you'd love it. I've dusted off the old inbred costume. Oh, yes. I go as a mutant this year. <laughs> Go on, write down what you think the party theme was. Maybe it was a religious party. Because of the Nazi strong yes! religious beliefs. <laughs> religious inbreds. OK. Perfect. I think we might be one down at the start, but anyway. <laughs> See, ordinarily it's an advantage if someone shouts out what their answer is in one of these quizzes where you write down, but with Sharon, not so much. <laughs> OK, question number two. <laughs> okay. Has he drawn a penis? <laughs> You on Sky Flash Channel 37. <laughs> okay, question number two. Viktor Yushchenko became the new president of Ukraine. These remarkable pictures show Yushchenko before and after his presidential bid. Why was he looking so off colour? 
Oh, I know. Oh, oh. Oh, All right. Yeah. I do know. I know. They no. were trying to poison no, him. Don't tell me. <laughs> Write it down. It's a yeah. quiz. You have to write it down, and then I tell you the answers at I, the end of the. And also now, I I knew that, okay. and it won't look like I knew that. It'll look like that. <laughs> <laughs> he did poison him, though. I know that. Write down why you think Viktor Yushchenko looks a bit ropey, and if you heard Sharon, I think you might get a clue in that she <laughs> shouted the answer out. Whatever's I... done, it, the thing that happened to his face seems to have done his hair quite a bit of good. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. You'll enjoy this one, Gordon. Thank you. This was the year of the blessed St. Jamie of Oliver. Your question is, mm -hmm. before he started his school dinner's campaign, what was the average amount spent per school meal? Uh, God. Be about 15, 16 pounds a head, would it? <laughs> <laughs> there is a cover charge, yes. <laughs> the problem for all these children is how much do you tip? I think it's... Uh, <laughs> the little pink ladies do look very upset. Um, do you think there is a school, you know, posh enough that the kids are tipping? Yeah, someone like Eton or someone like that, surely they tip. It was, um, in fact, less money than there were... Don't, don't, if, if you know it, just keep it for us, we'll get extra No, but points. then the budget in the prison, I think it was, is that right? Less than well, a prison budget. They spent more in yeah. prisons. I think so, yeah. It costs a fortune to send people to prison. It costs more than it to cost <laughs> to send people to Eton to prison. If they only upped the security at Eton, we'd have some fantastically educated criminals. <laughs> <laughs> that, can, I, can I say to me? Gordon knows the answer. <laughs> Gordon, were you, when you were a kid at school, were you into food back then? Did you like your school dinners? Uh, no. God, in those days, it's completely different. Liver that had been cooked for three and a half weeks. Yeah. We used to have curries at my school that were blue. They'd found <laughs> a blue spice and put curry. it in there. Yeah, it might be... What school did you go to where you have curry? Was it Sellafield Comprehensive? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was in Mumbai. I was brought up in India. <laughs> so when did you start loving food then, Gordon? Oh, um, I suppose uh, more, more so at home, really, because Mum was a cook. Mum worked at a little restaurant um, in the Stratford Avon, so I used to go meet her after work at sort of half term, summer holidays. Can I ask you one more question? Yes, of course you can. How much did Jamie Oliver find out these school dinners were costing? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Write down your answers, we'll move on to the next question. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, watch this clip of sex bomb John McCrurick on Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> Them. No! Now let me out of it. How dare you! <laughs> My question is, what was he so angry about? His face. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Did you, do you remember the sequence where he picked his nose? <laughs> and he That's picked it. his nose and he picked it. He not only ate it, he kept picking it till it bled for <laughs> oh. And then he went back in for some more. What was he looking for? <laughs> How else do you know when to stop, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, I've got a final question for you. For the months of January and February. In February, whose crowd rallying efforts confirmed her as 2005's most passionate football fan? Whose crowd rallying efforts confirmed her? <laughs> Maybe if you say it slowly, you'll know. <laughs> There's no need to be like that. <laughs> it's not easy. God. <laughs> Gordon, Gordon, you should get this one. Crowd, yes. A football fan. We're A looking for a football fan. fan. There are thousands and thousands of football fans. How are the chances know, of us knowing the names of all of them? <laughs> <laughs> it's just not fair. Oh, I know, I've got it. Oh, oh sorry. Is it, Denise Van Allen has got it. <laughs> OK, final question for January and February. And for the next question, it's over to the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School in Neesden, who put on a rather unconventional school play. The question is, which news story are they acting out? Is this where you get your baby? Where is our new brother? <laughs> I'll still be godparents again. Here's a present that probably cost a million dollars. Thank you. Why are all the people outside laughing? They're impossibly cute, aren't they? Very so sweet. Cute. What new story were they acting out? I didn't think they were that cute, actually. Um, <laughs> what? 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 Right. What's the answer? <laughs> <laughs> Let's cut to the chase. Um, <clears throat> they were acting out a new story. Oh. And why are the people 
Mm. We're guessing. We, we might be there. I don't know. But it's Have a, a little guess. I'm not too sure. It's tough to see because they are so cute. You almost get blinded by their cuteness. It's like the cuteness blindness equivalent of snow blindness. You can't stare at the children for too long. I don't think you should be staring at children so long you go blind. <laughs> <laughs> you should be moved on. <laughs> OK, just as every member of Blue has a failed solo project, so every question has an answer. <laughs> Here they come. OK, I asked you, what was the theme of the fancy dress party Prince Harry went to? What have you all put? Yes, religious inbreds. <laughs> OK, heroes and villains. OK, I could see that. I could see oh, what yeah. the logic is. I mean, obviously, we don't know whether he thinks the Nazis are heroes or villains. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And Gordon and Rob, have you ever been to a fancy dress party before? <laughs> Dictators and vicars. It's a new spin <laughs> on an old favourite. <laughs> I can tell you that you all got that wrong. Oh. Uh, the, well, the answer was colonial and native. Oh, for God's sake. Was what, the theme of the party. How posh a party was that? That's We're having fancy native. dress. We're going colonial and native. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's... there was a prince going to it, so quite posh, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> said that where I go, what the hell are you talking about, colonial and native? Good <laughs> God. Let's just dress up in fishnet tights and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you, why was Viktor Yushchenko looking so off colour? What did you all have? We he put was... poisoned by Russians. The bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, what have you put? We've got he was poisoned. And you boys have got he was poisoned also. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You are all absolutely right. He had allegedly been poisoned by a presidential rival, no less. Have you ever poisoned anyone, Gordon? Uh, no. Funny I, enough, be no. I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> that one on the F factor, that fucking soup you gave me almost finished me off. That was <laughs> Clearly, you hadn't planned ahead that day, had you? <laughs> and you're doing one of your other jobs, like a corporate or something. And you said, no. I've got the main course. They turned up and said, Oh, we need a fucking soup. I said, What? Open an egg, put it in some green stuff. That's all it was. You <laughs> boiled up an old <laughs> pair of tights. That's all it was. It was a nice soup made with potatoes and watercress and very autumnal and just. No one liked it, did they, Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> no one liked it. Almost everyone, even though it was free, people were sending it back. <laughs> Gordon, don't cry, it's being mean. <laughs> oh, you're a very good cook. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, that, well, you all got that right. He was poisoned, allegedly, by a presidential rival. I've got a theory that the same thing is happening to Tony Blair. Have a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's Gordon Brown's work. <laughs> OK, I asked you, how much was spent on the average school meal before Jamie Oliver's campaign? We thought it was about 26p. I seem to remember reading 26p. 26p? We... Frankly, ridiculous. You're wrong. What did you two go for? We, we put 21p, not including wine. <laughs> 37p <laughs> per little child. Are we right? You're absolutely right on Thank the money. 37 much. pence per child. Let's move on. <laughs> I asked you what so enraged John McCurrick. Diet Coke. He wanted his Diet Coke. They took away his Diet Coke and then oh. they said, would someone else give up something of theirs in return for the Diet Coke? And he said, how dare you? How dare you? And then he went and picked his nose till it bled. <laughs> Now, you, you boys, Gordon and Rob, you put Coke as well? Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. the correct answer. Oh, uh, Denise and David, what did you go for? Toilet roll. Want, yeah, we said he the... wanted some loo roll. Does he really look like the kind of man that wipes his ass? Definitely <laughs> 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 not. The most passionate football fan of 2005 was, of course... Dealey Smith. Yes, nice <laughs> And you got, you got Dealey Smith as well? We said yes. Dealey Smith. You've all got that. Do you, should we have a look at that magic moment? Please. Yes, please. Have a look. A message for the best football supporters in the world. <laughs> Okay, and lastly, question six. Most schools go for a traditional nativity play depicting the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitchell Book Primaries went for something else. What do they go for? We guessed that maybe it was Posh and Bex having their. Was it their third child? Yes, yeah, Baby Cruise. Okay, so you're going for Baby Cruise, you're going for Baby Cruise, yeah. you're going for Baby ba Cruise. Baby Cruise, yeah. yeah. You're all absolutely right. It was the, uh, <laughs> the birth of little David and Victoria's baby Cruz. <laughs> yes, David and Victoria Beckham call their third boy Cruz, which in Spain is a girl's name. It's old Catalan for, sorry, I fucked my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the scores after the first round. Uh, Sharon and Jonathan have four. Uh, Denise and David have three. Uh, Gordon and Rob are in the lead with five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's time now for the first of our bonus rounds. The Oscars <laughs> took place in February, so it's time now to test your knowledge of the year's movies. Jonathan, if you don't get these right, you're in a lot of trouble. I might get them wrong on purpose to make the other guys feel better. 
Yeah, right. OK, we've slightly improved this picture. Take a look. Tell me, what movie is it from? That looks like you, Jimmy. Oh, dear, that's yeah, looks very good. That looks like me. You've got, you've got to write them down? We write them down. Do we get bonus... Po I'm sounding like Ronnie Corbett for no reason. Do we get... Do we get... Do we get bonus points for extra information? Do we get that? <laughs> all right, OK. What have you all got? Why? For the hey. film Why? It was he Jamie Foxx. David and Denise, what did you have? I wrote it twice <laughs> before. Did you see it a couple of times? <laughs> uh, no, no. Yes, of course. I was replacing Oscar winner Jamie Foxx in Ray. All right, here's another one for you. Have a look at this. It's another bonus. Tell me which film is it from? Oh. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't want to see it. <laughs> yes. I think that's a vast improvement, I'm going to be honest with you. You'd have thought with modern special effects, they could have slimmed those cheeks down a bit. <laughs> Oh, easy. Okay, let's have a look at your answers. Okay. Can I put another one? Can we do it across that? Okay, Sh Sharon, Jonathan, Gordon, and Rob, well done. Sin City was the correct answer. For a bonus point, yeah. name the two directors of Sin City. It was um, Quentin Tarantino did a little bit of it. No, you're wrong already. One for us. <laughs> oh, was it Robert Rodriguez? Robert Rodriguez, and number two? Frank Darabont. Oh, you're grasping, you're in the right area, but sadly... No. I'll tell you who it was. No, you won't. You no, tried no, twice, the... got it wrong. <laughs> Don't even bother. It's not part of the quiz. Please stop, stop the quiz. Why is it not part of the quiz? <laughs> Why is it not part of the quiz all of a sudden? Someone asks a question in a quiz, someone answers it, that's part of the quiz. You're standing <laughs> there, butting in every chance yeah. you get. We could be doing a very nice quiz over here if it wasn't for you. <laughs> this has a far more BBC feel to it, if you don't mind me saying. No, I think it's... <laughs> no, it's not Frank Dover. Is it Sin City? Frank Miller, Frank Miller. Too late, I'm afraid. You got it wrong twice before you hit on the right answer. <laughs> yes, Frank Miller. OK, over to you, Jimmy. Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, it was, of course, uh, Sin City. Let's have a look at the original. I was, of course, standing in for uh, Bruce Willis. And your total scores at the end of that bonus round are Sharon and Jonathan have six, uh, Denise and David have four, Gordon and Rob have seven. And now, while Jonathan nicks off to make yet another TV programme, we'll take a break. See you in a minute. <laughs> Let's press on with a reminder about the events of March and April. Pope John Paul II fell ill. He said he'd rather die in office than retire. We said... Good news, Your Holiness, you're in luck. <laughs> in the days leading up to the Pope's death, he spent a lot of time at the window waving to the masses. It was like a Catholic version of Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> the Pope's funeral meant that Prince Charles was forced to postpone his wedding to Camilla Parker Bowles. She was livid. She had plans for Saturday. She was running in the 410 at Aintree. <laughs> And it was confirmed that Camilla will officially be crowned Queen when Charles becomes King. When she heard the news, the Queen said, over my dead body. Yes, Mum, that's how it works. <laughs> Wayne Rooney's girlfriend, Colleen, modelled for Vogue. Of course, it's not the first time he's dated a cover girl. <laughs> Liz Hurley launched her own range of swimwear and came out with my favourite quote of the month. She said, and this is absolutely true, she said, I've done all the fittings on my sister and her friends, so the large and extra-large bikini bottoms have been tested on real girls. <laughs> is, that, is that the bitchiest thing you've ever heard in your yeah, lives? It's really bitchy. She tested it on real people, not special people like her. <laughs> you know what, Liz Hurley? Fuck you and fuck your fat ass. <laughs> right, time for the March and April questions. Cast your minds back. Here's Prince Charles enjoying his holiday in cloisters. <laughs> Which particular awful man was he talking about? We well, know. You don't have to look at it we like know. that. We, we know. know. We know, we know. know the answer. I met All right, easy. Let's test whether you yeah. know when we come to the answers. I met Prince Charles recently. That's right. He gave me a medal. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and on and the as day... you walked in, did he say, I can't bear that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was surrounded by scientists. It was very weird. Have you got an OBG? Oh, no, you haven't, have you? <laughs> OK, second question. We got that. When they finished filming for the day, TV legends Richard and Judy often enjoy sitting around reminiscing in a cryptic way about the year's top news stories, which is handy for us. Have a look at this. Tell me what they are wittering on about. 
I think it was the pasta the night before. She had pasta and salmon. And it was gluten-free pasta. It was gluten-free. Goes right through you. And goes right... And, and it was causing cramps. Yeah. So... Tell you what, if I'd been there, I would have been holding my breath. What? That was, that's too cryptic. That's too cryptic. Too cryptic? Yeah. We've got it's a cryptic get, clue. I think we've got it. That was about it. the most lucid I've seen Richard and Judy ever being, actually. <laughs> What are you going on about the time you went on about how you can see naked cocks on TV but you can't see vaginas after a certain hour? It's the sort of thing you would say, you know, at three in the morning when you hope no one was listening. <laughs> he puts it out on air. <laughs> so they, they record that show at about three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I get stuck into the lagers at about 9 pm. <laughs> Cameras roll on them at three. <laughs> Very successful format. Exciting stuff. All right, next question. Well, what is the Hang question? On. Was who are they talking about? Yeah, who are they talking okay. about? Okay. So, okay, so hang on, let's clear up. Yeah, let's, let's because clear it's up. who it's were they discussing? Not what subject. But it could be it could be the event that caused it. But you could add the name. I'll accept the name or what happened. Is there anything we could write that you won't accept? <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Next question. In April, which restaurant was named best in the world? I'll give you a clue, Gordon. Not one of yours. <laughs> It's too easy. He knows the answer. OK, for your next question, I can't believe our luck, we're going over to the lovely Charlotte Church. Hi, Jimmy. My gav helped Wales to beat England in the Six Nations this year. But what unbelievably painful thing did one Welsh fan do to celebrate? Okay. We, we know the answer to this, but uh, well, I know the answer in Sharon. Uh, this is almost... It could possibly be true. It's, it's almost... True. It is unbelievable. No, I... Yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely true. It was in the papers. But if you it's saw it, actually, if you if you saw it in the paper, you would not be able to forget this. Okay. Next next question. Take a look at this sketch. Oh. Who drew that? It's too good for Rolf Harris, isn't it? <laughs> right. Question number six is going to be asked by some celebrity guests that we've got coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause for the couple of the year, Jordan and Peter Andre. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You could not look more glamorous. Oh. Tell you, it's lovely to have you here. You look fantastic. Bit underdressed, aren't we? Look at you guys. A million bucks. Uh, I don't know if you're underdressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a hell of... You just happen to have that on. Exactly. Christmas, bit of fur. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't actually see the fur, don't worry. <laughs> it's been an amazing year for you yeah. two. Ah. Now, you, you had a baby this year? Yes. Well, and, she did, yeah. And you also got married? <laughs> yes. Not in the right order, but no one's having no, a go. Exactly. <laughs> but what were the other highlights? We had a great year. We got married. We obviously consummated the marriage very quickly. We had a baby. Hang, hang, hang on. What? Very quickly. Yes. <laughs> Three okay. minutes. No, but the wedding night. What happened on your wedding night? Nothing. We ate crisps and, crisps and, sandwich. and sandwiches. I was too knackered. Sorry, you were in bed with that, and you thought I'll have a crisp and a sandwich. <laughs> no. <laughs> she was in bed with Amazing. this, and she thought she'll have a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway, it was a good year. You know. Why is it always about sex? Because Peter comes on, I associate him with... I'm rubbing Thank off you. on you then, Pete. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this could get so naughty, let's carry on. The rubbing off on your comment. I, I know, I know. <laughs> now, I believe you've got a question for us. Shit. Yes. yes. <laughs> Don't worry, Pete. Thank you. I've got a brain Take over, somewhere. darling. Yeah. Question is... What song, hello, by the way. Hello. Hi, what hello. song did um, we sing at the wedding and at Children in Need? Ooh, I know this. I know the answer to this. Don't all rush. I it know once. the answer. How are you, Denise? I haven't oh, seen right, you for thank years. You. How are you? Good, good. How and he you? said you look gorgeous, by the way. Come on, Bless Kate. You. Thank you. Yes, you do. <laughs> I said Jonathan looked gorgeous. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Tell us what, what have you got coming up next year? Oh, well, fitness video. You've got a fitness video? Now, what yeah. have we got coming no, up? No, me first. Fitness video. <laughs> and my I think I might buy that. comes out in February. I could do with getting into shape and, you know, <clears throat> it might pass a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. The problem is Jimmy, uh -huh. Jimmy, uh -huh. Jimmy, the problem is if you bought it, you'd have an enormous right arm and your left arm would be like a new one. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't, mate. If you do buy it, switch. Three minutes at right? a time is not enough. <laughs> Peter, what have you got coming up? What have I got coming yeah, up? Oh, by you... the way, we're releasing our record as well. Are you going to release? You're going to yeah. release our are record? We? Yeah, we are. Well, let's see if they knew what it was, first of all. Right. Tell us what your answers a are. A whole you new world. Hey. A new exciting point of view. <laughs> I'll take you anywhere. <laughs> Near a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes like that a bit, doesn't it? That's a great song. From, from Aladdin. Now, 
<laughs> when you got kids, you know all the Disney songs. Did you, did you hear that Jackson joke about Aladdin? You must have heard that, eh? The Jackson joke about Aladdin? Yeah. I'm imagining it, that's the punchline, is it? Well, yeah, really. <laughs> and then she said no. So a whole new world from the movie Aladdin. You sang yes. that at the wedding and at Children in Need. It's yes. a correct answer. They all got it. Anyway, so, um, I've got lots coming up next year. Lots and lots and lots. And no one gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, more power to you. Uh, Thank please you. give it up for Jordan and Peter Andre. Thank you. 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 Nicholas Winchell, I think oh, he's the man, BBC so correspondent who was out there at the time. Touched. And he does try, I've never met him, he seems a bit awful from what I've seen on TV. Okay, I and, think uh, he looks like Denise? a right wanker. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks like what, sorry? A right wanker. You're saying it posh because we're talking about the royal family. Yes. I wonder if the Queen ever talks dirty to Philip when they're. Oh, she does. <laughs> she goes, I want it harder, you <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Nicholas Winchell. Huh? It's Nicholas Witchell. Yeah, well, we, we, got, we, we got, got Winchell. You put Winchell. No, no we no, haven't. It isn't working very well. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Rob, you know fully well he's got a speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be having a go at it. I'm for that. I'll one for forever. <laughs> You're giving Jonathan points just from sympathy. <laughs> and, and it's not fair. You both get a point for uh, Nicholas Witchell. I'm afraid you get nothing for the pass. <laughs> OK, I asked you, what were Richard and Judy chatting oh, about? Dear. What did you put? We put Paula Radcliffe, but really, to be mm. fair, they could have been chatting about just about anything, but we thought pasta or something, she was... ..cos she stopped to have a little jimmy. Dump. Didn't she? No, no she, she didn't have a dump. Wee, you can't stop and have a dump in America. No, she did a wee. Two. It was a wee! How yeah. yeah. could she stop and do a dump? It was She had she a did. dump! She did! She did not have a dump! She did! Sorry, this is getting too much like Newsnight Review. The sad fact is, it was a watery shit. Yes! Oh, well, Paula Radcliffe is the correct answer. Gordon and Rob, I noticed you didn't, you didn't uh, enter Paula this. Paula Radcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was Paula Radcliffe. Um, oh. Oh. Either, was... either taking a pee or a dump, we're not entirely Ooh. sure. It was a wee! I tell you what, if you think that's bad, you should have seen what the guy in the rhino suit left behind. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I asked you which restaurant had been named best in the world. OK, let's ask Gordon if he knows. Flatline. Yes. Um, amazing guy, um, Heston, and he uh, runs a, a restaurant called The Fat Duck. And do you rate him, Gordon? That's what we want to know. Um, yeah, no, he's a cool guy. Yeah, he's uh, quirky. Snail porridge. Snail porridge? <laughs> Snail porridge. Um, smoked bacon ice cream. Um, and he sort of poaches meringue in sort of liquid nitrogen. <laughs> it's just this sort of dodgy trolley that, you know, it's pushed out on thinking... Fuck, if that wheel falls off, your fingers have gone. No, 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 Ramsey. It's on a the trolley. The trolley was perfectly stable the night I went. <laughs> Don't try and put people off from going to the best restaurant in the world. <laughs> it's on the level of their trolley wheel. <laughs> it's of desperation, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> I we expect better of you, you big, big girl. <laughs> Denise and David, have you been to this place? No, I haven't. No. Yeah, he's a cool guy. I don't like the idea of the smoked bacon ice cream. Do you like bacon, Denise? I love bacon. Do you like ice cream? I... This reasoning is going to be flawed anyway. Do you like bacon? Do you like ice cream? You're bound to like bacon ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> You're bound to like chocolate sandwiches. What's the problem? I but happen I to like chocolate sandwiches. We all sandwiches. like chocolate sandwiches. <laughs> That's insane. You're all mad. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate sandwiches. I like my ends. bacon hot. You like your bacon hot? Mm. He probably do. Everything sounds vaguely sexual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like my bacon hot. <laughs> Although uh, when you say it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Um, you've put the duck at Bray. I think we can give you that. Yes. Such a great restaurant. Apparently, even the foxes have got a three month waiting list for the bins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Bob Lancas. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I think you'll find there's like a three second period after which fuck off is not an adequate <laughs> comeback. <laughs> you may as well have done that in the car on the way home. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> so, Gordon, you've yes. had a big year, haven't you? Yeah, it was a very big year. You spent some time in the States, I believe. You've yes. made it big. Yeah, it went down very well. What do they make of you? Because they're not... I've done some work in the States and they don't like the swearing one little bit. It was very hard to get the cooks up to speed with your sort of terminology and, you know... Um, 
Toss pan pot. and uh, yeah. oven and things like that. Uh, <laughs> toss pot. <laughs> What is a toss pot exactly? To just uh, a guy is absolutely fucking useless, to be honest. Um, well, and they just didn't understand. So you were calling them a toss pot, and they're going, "Well, I better find it. Where is it?" <laughs> <laughs> Where's the toss vegetable? pot? He needs the toss pot. <laughs> <laughs> he needs the fucking toss pot now. <laughs> Question four. Charlotte Church, of course, asked the question. It would be rude not to go back to her. Let me just recap. This was the story of a Welsh fan and what he did after the game. Um, Jonathan, you've got... Cut his bollocks off. We agree. <laughs> no, how did he cut his well, he bollocks did. off? That's what happened. I know you don't like the idea, but that's what he did. None of us like the idea. He used scissors. He used pliers. Oh! <laughs> Household so he pliers. sort of dragged his bollocks off. Were it they took him... OK, you know what? This is going to make you feel a bit worse. It took him ten minutes. Oh. <laughs> Look, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. <laughs> Didn't he no, then Jimmy. take his bollocks in a bag into the pub to show his friends? Yes, he did. <laughs> well, actually, it's worse than that, Denise, because he took his, um, he took his bollocks round to a friend's house uh, in, in a bag of peas, and his friend wasn't in. <laughs> Imagine how disappointed you'd be. <laughs> Go back, like you said, blimey, bird's eye are getting adventurous, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Will you give me one for Willy? <laughs> That's all the same thing once you're down there, isn't it, really? I'll tell you what, I'll give you Willy if Charlotte says Willy. Let's, go, <laughs> right. let's go by her yeah. answer. Well, he cut his own Jacobs off with a blunt wire cutter. Yes. Now, in Wales, we call <laughs> Willy <laughs> a Jacobs. Go, oh, we've got a picture of the man there. That's the man posing for a photo in the Sun newspaper. Oh, for God's sake. Uh, with a pair of that? pliers on the toilet he sat on while he chopped his testicles off. I love the no, fact no. he's posing for a photo quite, quite yeah. happily. One yeah, of the most traumatic right. experiences of my life. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, we'll have a photo, get some pliers. <laughs> we'll do it like this. And his shoelaces are undone as well. I want to be careful. <laughs> What's he going to do? Have an Trip over and hurt his knackers? <laughs> I asked you who the piano was drawn by. What did you all put? Well, initially you said Elton John, didn't you? I didn't. Well, that was just word association, wasn't it? You saw a piano. Yes. Are you creative. suggesting that Elton John would be a ridiculously stupid answer? Because if you are, talk to Gordon and Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't actually put Elton John, did you? Yes. We think it was the piano man, who I think was either a Polish fella or a Russian fella, who was found well, wandering on chap. the beach. It's that chap, And they yes. didn't know, and he couldn't, he didn't speak, so he drew a piano, and they said, oh, he must be a genius at piano. And it turned out he can't play the bloody piano, but he can really draw one well. <laughs> We put the piano man. OK, now, no oh, points sorry. for that, because everybody knows the piano man is Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, his real name is Andreas Grassol, but he's known no. as the piano man. I will accept the piano man, of course. Oh, thank you. Question number six. Jordan and Peter. Was the Jordan and Peter? I'm sure you all got that right. Yeah. Yes. yes. A whole new world, a whole new world, a whole new world. Let's move on to our next special round. How much attention were you paying to the music scene in 2005? Let's find out. Can you tell me which song this news story relates to? There has been a forecast of widespread civil unrest. Police chiefs in the north were prompted to issue the warning following a series of local incidents, including an assault apparently sparked by looking the wrong way at a policeman <laughs> and a violent dispute over a taxi said to have involved a man in a tracksuit. After stressing once again the likelihood of further uprising, a spokesman for the group added, la la la, <laughs> la 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 la. That was, of course, uh, Jon Snow doing a news report about a popular hit this year. What song do you think they were talking about? David Mitchell, you look as if you don't know what a song is. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I, I, that's, that's all I know, basically. I do know what a song is. I'm aware that thousands of people enjoy music and football, but I don't understand either, and I wish they'd go away. <laughs> I love to have a look at the, the look on Gordon and Rob's face. If ever there were two <laughs> middle-aged men with no idea... <laughs> that is so... They go... <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job you're not a middle-aged man, isn't it, John? <laughs> Christ, look at that. Christ, there's a bit of youth on the scene. No, but we're yes. in touch. We know what's going on we out there, don't we? We live on the edge. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've got, I've got it. I've got it. OK, let's reveal the answer. The, the song John Snow was talking about was... <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that song. No. Never heard that song. <laughs> <laughs> that song. Yeah. Yeah. No, really bad. And I do know, I do know, do you wanna, do you do, I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse than that, we put down fucking Amarillo. Amarillo. <laughs> <laughs> La 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 la
<laughs> oh, <laughs> I predict a riot actually, yes. by the Kaiser Chiefs. Well, yeah. there we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. It's all happening. Yeah. Right, OK. Pay attention to the second news story Jon Snow is about to tell you. <laughs> what song is he going on about? There have been calls for reform of the Mental Health Act after a young woman today issued a desperate appeal for psychological counselling for a number of psychiatric conditions for which she claims her boyfriend is largely responsible. Describing herself as insane, unglued, whacked out and really not logical, the woman at the centre of the landmark case says that she now requires professional help. Authorities have argued that enthusiasm for a member of the opposite sex may not warrant the services of a qualified psychotherapist funded by the taxpayer. OK, what song do you think he was talking about there? We know it. Oh, let's ask the, the granddads first. Yes. <laughs> uh, we said, what song was the nice man talking about? Yes, that lovely Charlotte Church. And, and her wonderful hit song? Therapy. Crazy, Crazy Chick. Crazy Chick. chick. Crazy, Crazy Chick. Oh, he pulled it out of the bag at the last moment. Crazy Chick. You wrote down therapy, though? No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I <laughs> bloody did not. No, you bloody did. Look, if there is something wrong with this system, <laughs> this is happening repeatedly throughout the years. It's so you don't know anything. Sometimes nothing comes up at all. <laughs> I'll give him a point for that. But uh, David we, and Denise, nothing? No, we did get it, but our thing wasn't working, yeah, she, so... Mm. so no, I think they're actually lying on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything as pretty as Denise could tell a lie. <laughs> did, did you get it, Dave? It was me that got it, yeah. <laughs> uh, the story's not really checked it out. Now, is pretty it? tell a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan oh. Sharon, you got it right, of course. Yeah, of course. We got it right. <laughs> Crazy chick. Uh, let's have a listen. You drive in me, or insanity, all the things you do. You make me come on me. I just can't help myself. I need a Right, well, at the end of part two, this is how the scores are looking. Sharon and Jonathan have 14 points, Denise and David have 11 points, Gordon and Rob are behind with 10. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's time for a break. We'll see you in a moment. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. British summertime has arrived. Yes, we've reached May, and like Terry, we are enthusiastically entering June. <laughs> In the run-up to the general election, Tony Blair claimed that he had sex with Cherie up to five times a night, and I thought the decision to go into Iraq was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Pitt divorced Jennifer Aniston and swiftly hooked up with Angelina Jolie. The reason cited was irreconcilable differences. The difference being, Angelina Jolie is filth. <laughs> <laughs> American Malcolm Glazier bought Manchester United and promised to respect the traditions of the club, speaking from his office at Ye Old Trafford Soccerplex and Drive-In Bolodrome. <laughs> the Dutch said no to the EU constitution because they're against Turkey entering. Ironically, Turkey entering volume four was the number one selling DVD in Amsterdam this year. <laughs> right, on to the questions. Well, the Michael Jackson trial ended with Jackson cleared of all charges, much to the delight of his fans. You, the jury, in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count five of the indictment. Michael Jackson was always innocent and he was proven innocent by a jury of his peers. You cannot court. argue with that. What did the especially stable and well-balanced woman at the end do every time a not guilty verdict was announced? Ooh, I know this. She oh, licked his bum. <laughs> That's right, Sharon. Yes, Sharon. everybody. Sharon's right. Put it down. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever met Michael Jackson? I bet you haven't. Yes. What was he like? Um... Strange. <laughs> Very strange. Hold it. Coming no, from you, that's quite something, isn't it? No, 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 no. He was holding a rose like this in his hand and he kept smelling the rose like this. Which period was this, Sharon? Which period, Michael, are, are we talking about? What shade of, of brown was it? it I mean, was, was it a long the, time ago? It was the definitely I've got a fucking hole in me nose period. <laughs> it was like. Did you um, see it up close, didn't it? Yeah, he fills it with like this putty stuff. You know, like you give kids that. <laughs> Play-Doh. Play -Doh. No, he's definitely out of his little mind, poor thing. OK, second question. What was banned from Blue Water Shopping Centre? Yeah, I know this is Blue Water Shopping <laughs> <laughs> Right, watch this clip of GMTV's Ben Shepherd and his Hollywood correspondent. Try it. It's a Friday. 
Come on, Ben, you've got I to was, do I it. I was going to do it, He's but they just said in my ear, twice. health and safety, you oh, can't get on it's this. Pathetic. It's pathetic. Go on, do it. Get up there, get up there. I love Katie. I love... Oh. <laughs> 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 what I want to know is, who were they discussing? OK. We know the answer. OK. For your next question, I'm going to hand you over to the one, the only, Darren Brown. Ooh. Watch carefully. You're about to see a clip from Trick of the Mind, 2005, and in it, I influence a young guy through a specially designed arcade game. The question is, what happened next? Let's keep the pace slow. Put a couple of flashes in now. Another flash. Oh, he's going. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in. Don't come with me. OK, so the question is, what did Darren Brown do to a young man? <laughs> I bet it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next question. These pictures are of unemployed man Martin Croson and they were used as evidence against him in court, along with several jujitsu trophies found in his house. My question is, why was he in trouble? Oh, we know that. OK, answer. well, we move right along to the answers. I asked you what did one Michael Jackson fan do every time a not guilty verdict was announced. We put release to Dove, although I will concede it looks like I've written release to Dave, but obviously... <laughs> yeah, it would have been hard for her to wind up a lot of Daves. Who were and do you know where she kept Jackson that court. Dove? She had more than one. Yes! Do you what? Kept the bra. stuff downstairs? Yes. Downstairs. So it wouldn't fly away. Well, well, she did. She had them in her knickers. She did, didn't she? She did. She had a box. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been to Bangkok? Yes. <laughs> Cups and saucers, the whole lot up there. <laughs> OK, well, you all got, uh, you all got released to Dove. Let's, let's have a look at the clip. We, the jury, in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count five of the indictment. That, that's a very uninviting vagina. <laughs> <laughs> they were originally going to release minor birds, but they thought better of it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what was banned from uh, Blue Water Shopping Centre? Hoodies. Hoodies. Yes. Hoodies. Well, Hoodies. you all got it. Yeah. Hooded, hooded tops. Hooded tops. <laughs> <laughs> Proper grown-ups. <laughs> well, like, uh, OK, of the men here, all, right, all of us of a certain age, just to be said, apart from David, you're not of a certain age, I don't think. I'm of a certain age. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was using it politely as a kind of thing, saying middle age, really. Right. I mean, you're not a certain age, but you seem to have been born 50, so we'll assume... <laughs> <you're not. laughs> Who of the men here own a hooded garment of some sort that would get them banned from the Blue Water shopping establishment? I own a hoodie. Who wears the hoodie up? I occasionally do. No, do you ever do I the ring up and the thing up. like that? It must look like a woman giving birth to like a, a sperm whale or something. <laughs> <laughs> like Papa Smurf coming out. <laughs> no wonder they banned him from Blue Water. It was like people go, ah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it it is reminiscent of a sequence in ET. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, you all got that absolutely right. Hoodies were banned from Blue Water yes, this year. Yes. yes. What, what did you make of that, David? Did you approve? I didn't give a shit either way. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. You've answered that adequately. OK, I asked you who Ben Shepherd was discussing on GMTV. Tom Cruise. We Kent. think it was Tom Cruise talking about Katie Holmes. The Cruiser Toller. It was, of course, Tom Cruise. You're absolutely right. Oh, little boy, look at him. He's so little, weeny little thing. Like, like a little troll. He'll he's, like, he's like a normal bloke, much further away than you thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say he's like a mad Scientologist a lot further away. <laughs> um, now, I asked you, uh, what did Darren Brown do to the helpless young man? What did you have? What? Well, you wrote an essay, John. Well, because <laughs> it was hard to sum up in a few words, because I've written there, actually, the flashing lights of the thing put him into a kind of a trance, and they took him out of that into another room, where they had recreated the room on the video game, filled with zombies and so on, and he got really upset about it. It was great. <laughs> Bizarrely, that is the correct answer. Yeah, it was great. My little boy watched it about a dozen times, which probably says a lot about my parenting. <laughs> right. Denise and David, what did you write? We put, he made him think he was still in the game, he went mental. <laughs> Very well done. Thank you. Gordon and Rob. Now, uh, you yeah. see, you didn't... <laughs> what you actually asked, and where's the tape back, was what happened next? Yes. Okay? <clears throat> An advert break. break. <laughs> 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 At 
was that was your question. <laughs> right? You have to be specific, Jimmy. <laughs> I won't blink, my friend. <laughs> right. Well, should we go over to Darren Brown for the answer? Let's have a look. is genuinely evil <laughs> to do that to a man and then just put him back in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> the young man in question was absolutely fine. <laughs> for legal reasons, I have to say that he didn't, go, he didn't go crazy or anything. All the ones that went crazy, they didn't put in the programme. <laughs> <laughs> They're sort of roaming the highlands of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a they, Welsh uh, fellow that cut his nuts every... off. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next one. What had alligator wrestling, camel riding, jiu-jitsu champion Martin Croson done wrong? He was claiming disability benefits. No. No. We, what, what we put guess? benefit cheat because we figured he was obviously benefit cheating. Benefit cheat is along the right lines. Yeah. Uh, disability I mean, benefit is exactly right. It's specifically benefit disability fraud. benefit. We were a bit different. Benefit yes. fraud. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because you wrote benefit fraud and got it right, but actually what came out was uh, cruelty to animals. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it's not Cruelty to animals. <laughs> yes, and he was sat on a baby crocodile. Have you ever cooked one? <laughs> yes, I have, yeah. What do they taste like? Fucking disgusting. <laughs> Tough and really? horrible. Yeah, it's gross. Good. Well, you didn't put it in a soup recently, did you? <laughs> <laughs> With an egg on it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I can tell you that the correct answer is he was claiming disability benefit on the grounds that he was virtually unable to walk. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I give you your scores, I've got a bonus question for you, and here to ask it, I can scarcely believe my luck, it's the new Doctor Who, Mr David Tennant! <laughs> Are you excited about this? Um, I, I'm very excited about it, yeah. It's a bit daunting, you know, taking on this kind of well-loved character and all that. It's sort of, uh... I've read that you used to dream, when you were little, you used to dream about being Doctor Who. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, uh, but everyone at my age did, I think. You know, we all grew up absolutely loving it. I thought it was incredible. I mean, I couldn't believe how good it was when it came back. Yeah, it? yeah. It's one of those childhood things that you think, actually, it's not going to deliver. Mm. And it so delivered the first series. Mm. Mm. How did it's you all get... going to go downhill next series. It's going to be a disaster. Well, I was going to ask how you managed to convince Christopher Eccleston to get out. Did you say, oh, you'd be typecast? It'd be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do one just... series each and then you're never going to leave. That's it. It's we Jimmy Cranky next year. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I compliment David on his role in Blackpool? You can, thank you very much, Rob. Cheers. I thought you were very can good I, in that. Can I compliment you on your role as Casanova? Thank you very much, Jonathan, you me. Can I compliment Anyone else? you? <laughs> there was a lovely piece on you in one of the supplements this weekend. <laughs> and, uh, I thought you came over very well in that. Right. <laughs> can I compliment you on the drawing my little boy did of you, in which you look most handsome? I'd like to see that. Yes, I will show it to you. Top I that, think. Bryden. <laughs> I think if you could have picked I'd two people... I'd actually like to compliment you on the size of your feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the shoes more than my actual feet. But thank you anyway. Tell, tell you what, though, Sharon, he's got a lovely cock as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a baby's arm holding an apple. I right. see. <laughs> it's like the TARDIS. It feels so much bigger once it's inside me. <laughs> <laughs> not that I know. Not that I know. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. <laughs> Can I, can, I ask, uh, can I ask a question? Of all Doctor Whos that there have been, yeah. everybody has a favourite, yeah. who did you think was the worst? 
<laughs> I'm, th I'm guessing Sylvester McCoy, but you may want to you may want to go somewhere else with it. I, it's probably going to be me. That's the terrible oh, truth. Oh, stop it! Oh, oh come on now. You can learn a lot from him, Jonathan. I think, he's <laughs> <so> <laughs> yeah. I think he's going to be great as Doctor Who. I'm really looking forward to it. And you got the Cybermen coming up, haven't you? We've got the Cybermen coming back. Yeah. I love the Cybermen. Yeah. yeah Who else? Yeah. You got any other oldies coming back? Any old villains? We've got Keenan coming back. Oh, he's oh, great. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not sure about that. Is that a good idea? It's a very good idea. Have they given us a streamlined Keenan, or is it the same one, which is basically a cardboard box painted silver? He's pops. old and battered and rusty and hanging together with... with... Oh, maybe Don't have a go at Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit okay. like R2-D2, isn't it? In the new movies, R2-D2 is, can suddenly jump, spin, fizzle. Yeah. So if you go chronologically, it's as though he had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the first Star Wars, because it's meant to be going on, but he yeah. just goes around going... <laughs> <laughs> the technology in the ones which are meant to be old is better than... So yeah, sure, exactly. The reason chat rooms were invented were for men like you. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Now, you've got a question for us. Yeah. OK. It's a, it's a what happened next style of question, if you like. And the, the question is, which part of my new anatomy am I about oh to refer to? Before I go, I just want to tell you, you were fantastic. And you know what? So was I. Write down your answers, everyone. What have you got, Jonathan? I'm still drawing. Really? I'm still drawing. Hold on. Yeah. Still drawing. This yeah, doesn't bode enjoyed, well. This is quite a good. This sums up the whole Doctor Who movement. <laughs> Him coming on there. Look at that. Okay, show me. Look at that. Let me. Let me just look, have a look at this. Thank you for coming on before you see this. <laughs> it was your teeth. You came and you went. Hello. Yes. I'm the who. Oh, well, oh, oh, new teeth. That's weird. That's exactly what you said. That, that is pretty Boys. much word for word, I have to, I have to oh, confess. Yes, yes. He's a fanboy. Yeah, yeah, it's a great show. I love the Doctor Who, and there's the picture I've done. It's got a picture of you with your new teeth, if you can have a look at that. And it's got you standing up like you are just there. There's a Dalek over there. There's K9. There's a TARDIS. It says teeth. It says David Tennant at the bottom. Doctor Who at the bottom, in case there's any doubt. Bonus points, surely. That's lovely. That's lovely. That's lovely. That's lovely. I think you could get sectioned if, if the right people saw that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, Denise Van Outen and David Mitchell have gone for... We, we went for ears. We went for ears. Ears. Now, yeah. controversially, uh, it's wrong, of course. Yeah. Mm. Controversially, Rob Brydon got up while we showed the clip <gasps> and asked David Tennant, is it your nose? Mm. <laughs> oh, cheat. No, I didn't. <laughs> yes, yes, you did, Rob. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. And what proof. did he say? He said, yes, it's my... Ah! He said, yes, it's my nose. <laughs> Were you lying? It might have been, it might have been a little fucker. lie. Sorry. <laughs> That's what you get for cheating. Yes, see? and that shows the new Doctor Who in a very good light, the fact that he would book no lying, cheating Welshman. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at that clip and see whether Jonathan was definitely right, which yes, he was. Yes, come on. Hello. OK. New teeth. That's weird. So where was I? Oh, that's right. Barcelona. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the new Doctor Who, David Turner. Yes, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Doctor Who, I can't wait. Do you Doctor Who? OK, well, let's see how the scores are looking at the end of that. Uh, Sharon and Jonathan have 20 points. Uh, Denise and David have 16. Yeah. Gordon and Rob falling further behind with 13. Oh. Oh. That's a shame. That's a shame. That's a shame. That's a shame. Right, we've got another bonus round. Here's how it works. I will show you pictures. You work out what headline they represent. Here's an example for you. This is, of course, Jimmy Carr photographs Uranus. <laughs> what I'm going to give you is some real headlines in pictorial form, and you have to work out what they are. Could not be simpler. Here is the first one. Is it an awesome? What's that? Okay, write down your answers. Whoa, are we going to need longer than this? Just take a guess. Okay. All right, the magic roundabout. <laughs> okay, let's have a look and see what you've got. Okay, Rob, Rob, you've got no idea. Neither, neither has Gordon. <laughs> In fairness, he's got a proper job. He's busy during the day. What are you up to? <laughs> Maybe not the finest writing, Jonathan, but I think we'll give you that. We put Crazy Frog beats Coldplay. We couldn't work out what that red thing in the middle was. We thought it was like, a, like a modern art close-up of someone's arse or something. 
Denise and David. Oh, we've got Crazy Frog outsells Coldplay. You are exactly right. Wow. Uh, I've got another one of these. Mm. Big headline from the year. Mm. Oh, no, no, it's a gargoyle. That's Europe. That's the band Europe. Okay. Uh, that, that's the body. Oh, 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 lung. Oh, oh. Is it a lung or is it a liver? No. Jonathan and Sharon, can I have a little sit down? Oh. 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 We, we've got. We've got. Once again, we've got the beginning and the end. We've got okay. it, and it's pretty good. Let's have yep. a look and see what you've got. Uh, Denise Van Outen and David Mitchell. We, 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 we only got the first part. We didn't finish. Jonathan and Sharon, would you tell me what that says? Liverpool rides a bike across Tudor Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool <laughs> rides a bike across <laughs> Tudor Europe. Oh, the big headline from the year, I remember yeah. now. I don't know. Football, Liverpool, how am I to know? <laughs> we saw a Tudor house on a bike. How long can we be? <laughs> Rob and Gordon, you yep. seem confident. Yep. What have you um, got? That's the liver. Paul. Second, um, it looks like a VMAX, so it looks like Liverpool's victory in, because it's a cottage, Europe. Champions League. Uh, you are dangerously close. Oh, oh you're kidding. It, well, you're very, very close. It's Liverpool triumph. Oh. In Europe. I, I think we'll give you that. I think you were, you were so good. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty impressive. OK, we are halfway through now. Uh, Sharon and Jonathan have 21 points. Denise and David have 17 points. Gordon and Rob have 14 points. Yeah. Yeah. OK, it's break time now. And to keep you entertained during the commercials, see how many Rob Brydon voiceovers you can spot in the next three minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. We move now to July and August. Obviously, in July, the headlines were dominated by the tragic events in London. But there was other news. London won its bid for the 2012 Olympics. Just think, four million visitors, £6 billion in increased revenue and three bronze medals. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> the Live 8 concert took place in Hyde Park. There was some criticism with people saying Live 8 didn't make a difference. Nonsense. In one Rwandan village alone, 50 families bought the Razor Light album. <laughs> Over the summer, England was hit by severe droughts. I don't mean to sound churlish, but I didn't hear much from Ethiopia in our hour of need. <laughs> the least they could do is put out a charity single. <laughs> the sixth book in the Harry Potter series hit the shops. Did you know if you took all the Harry Potter books in circulation in the world today and laid them end to end, they would cover the surface area of Brazil? which, interestingly enough, is what they used to do in tree form. <laughs> <laughs> so, teams, and you play along at home, questions, questions, questions. We're going back to Mitchell Brook Primary School now for another school play. Bonjour. Good morning. Now it's time to sort out the world's problems. What are we having for tea? Anything. This place is full of mad cows and the food is horrible. Where are we again? Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. He said your food is horrible. He said all your cows are mad. We are telling. We are telling. Oh, no! Now you saw everything. <laughs> oh. Oh. What I want to know is what story were they acting out? It was the... Uh, yeah. Are you all right, Denise? You're getting broody. Hmm. Great so. <laughs> David, come on, make your move. <laughs> <laughs> OK, our next question is going to be asked by Hollywood's own Cameron Diaz and Tony Collette. Hello. Uh, we appear in a film together called oh, In Her Shoes, mm -hmm. and a little quiz question we have for you right now is which famous movie shoes were stolen, stolen. this year? Hmm. Hmm. OK, so what famous movie shoes were stolen this year? Next question. Time to eavesdrop once again on Richard and Judy as they discuss one of this year's big news stories. What I want to know is what are they chatting about? Well, I think it's... Revolting. I mean, to be honest, if you'd done something like that, I'd have been, you know, on the next train, yeah, out. There was an upside to it. Apparently, afterwards, she said that he'd made her feel fresh as a daisy. Well, I don't think that's any excuse whatsoever, especially when you've got someone who is so absolutely stunning and lovely and wonderful waiting for you at home. Yeah, to be fair, to be fair, it was conditional. He did say to her only to come up and see him if she was feeling lonely, and lonely wasn't in that night, apparently. He'd gone out. 
I don't think that's any excuse at all, Richard. And it's also a very feeble joke. But well, what about the kids? They were there. Yeah, the kids were asleep. Even so, even so, I do think it's pretty much, or should be, against the law. Oh, oh yes. that was... that made it so obvious for the people that didn't know it. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. OK. In August, America had its own tragedy, Hurricane Katrina. Which Hollywood actor raced to the scene to help with the relief effort, only to need saving himself? Jimmy, is bailing out a cryptic clue? It's not, is it? <laughs> no, no, it isn't, no. There's nothing cryptic about that. It's not Christian Bale, then, from Batman. <laughs> <laughs> no? OK, <laughs> next question. Let's remind ourselves of the spectacle that was Live 8. Fantastic. I must say, that clips package makes it look as if the day was so long they got older as it went on. <laughs> My question is this. Uh, it's what song did Pete Doherty sing? That question was sent in by Pete Doherty, who doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, have you all got something for that? Yes. I missed Live Aid. Not you missed Live Were you away? I was away, yes. Uh, I missed it. I was here. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it was great, obviously. Some oh, of the music was good. The Over and above incredible. the actual event itself, right? Some of the bands were great. Some of them I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't quite understand the point of um, Velvet Revolver there. And they came out and it was like some sort of spinal tap moment. Yes, and, excuse yeah. me, I have a complaint to make. Yes. They said that my husband couldn't perform because they had Velvet Revolver. And I said, how dare you? Yes. <laughs> Velvet Bloody Revolver? Well, in that voice, would you say, would you please say a handbag for me? A hand? Bar. There we go. What <laughs> <laughs> do you do? That's what the Queen says. And what do you do? Hold on, the medication's worn off. Quick! <laughs> <laughs> OK, straight on to the answers now. Yes. Uh, for July and August. Yeah. Uh, question one was, what were the children acting out? We think it was... First of all, we were going to say we thought it was something to do with the G8 summit then. When they were talking and he was saying... The French one was saying our food is rubbish, we thought it was Jacques, when Jacques Chirac tried to undermine our Olympic bid by saying our food was rubbish and therefore uh, we shouldn't have it. And then he, we lost... We, they lost anyway and we won. It was brilliant because even though we shouldn't be this way, it was great just to stuff the French. Yes. <laughs> I, I can see you've place. written Jacques Chirac and then some scribble. So Jacques well Chirac done. ruins French Olympic bid. OK, you've got the... Well, we said G8, because Jack Chirac said that on practically on the eve of the G8 summit. <laughs> that's and desperate. But that was the that's not desperate. That was one of the things they were talking about, the G8 summit. Gordon Ramsay, Rob Bryden, what have you got? Yep, G8 again um, in Edinburgh. And, um, G8 in Edinburgh. French insults yeah, and protests. Food. Yes. Well, I think you guys get a point and you get a point. Uh, it was Jack Chirac <laughs> slagging off British food. Well, fuck the French and fuck their snobby French food, which is, incidentally, the title of Gordon's new book. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, Cameron and Tony asked you what famous shoes were stolen. Ruby slippers, Wizard of Oz. Let's have a look. The answer is... The answer is... Dorothy's magical glittery red shoes. That'll be Dorothy. Of, oh, sorry, Dorothy's red shoes from The Wizard of Oz. From a, the brilliant film, The Wizard of Oz. OK, well, yeah, the brilliant film. Yeah. Ruby Slippers. We went Ruby, Ruby Slippers. slippers. Yep. Ruby and the Ruby Slippers, slippers you're absolutely right. It was the Ruby Slippers. I'm not sure who stole them, but I'll wager it isn't the only forced backdoor entry he's attempted this year. <laughs> <laughs> it was gay. <laughs> <laughs> you take a sideways look at everything. <laughs> I asked you what Richard and Judy were discussing. We guessed the Beckham affair. We, yeah, we did, did you? He fair. said law at the end of it. It was nanny gate. It was nanny gate. It was at the Jude point. Law affair with the nanny that was in the papers all over the summer. I but told Angelina you. <laughs> well, people have been asking why anyone would cheat on the stunning Sienna Miller. Well, when you're a famous actor like Jude Law, you can have your choice of women. It's like a box of chocolates. Sure, your favourite might be the strawberry cream, but every so often, you'll want to fuck a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a laugh, though, isn't it? 
<laughs> okay. We asked you which actor went to help the victims of Hurricane Katrina. What have you got? It's Sean Penn. Sean Penn. Sean Penn, you're absolutely right. We've got a picture. Have a look at this. Now, I appreciate he was going to help, but I think he's going to need a bigger beaker. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sean. I appreciate you trying to help, but that's going to take fucking ages. <laughs> he looks like he's um, adding to it. Was it Arnold Schwarzenegger, I wonder? It could have been, but I'm afraid it wasn't no. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, the next question I asked you mm -hmm. was, what did Pete Doherty sing at Live Aid? <laughs> what did you, uh, what did you get? A load of bollocks. <laughs> what does Ozzy make of your potty mouth? <laughs> he must be shot. He often has to stick something in it to make me be quiet. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Um, well, you wouldn't really have known from listening to it, would you? He was a bit all over the place, bless him. Uh, but it was Children of the Revolution, the T-Rex classic. It was the T-Rex classic, Children of the Revolution. <laughs> Apparently, Mark Boland hasn't been this upset since he died. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I've got a special bonus round for you now. Yeah. Three points available here. All you have to do is identify the TV noise. Here's your first TV noise. Just write down what it is. Start with an easy one. Oh. Vanessa Felt, Passing Wind. <laughs> OK, what, what have you all got? We've got the TARDIS. TARDIS, TARDIS, TARDIS. Let's have a look. OK, ready for the next one? Here it is. <laughs> Any idea what that is, Rob? Is it I... Wellard from EastEnders? <laughs> It's not, no. Is it a very famous sound? From it's Italian? a very famous sound. Mm. It's the most famous sound from a massive hit show that came to England this year. Oh, <sighs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. The answer is not. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just the name of the show, Jimmy? Just the name of the show. Well, let's have a look at what you've put. OK, we guessed a little bit. We put Carol Thatcher weeing, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> lost, lost, lost. Well, you're all right. It is the monster from Lost. Have a look. I think, it's fan I think it's the best thing on TV. Well, you yeah, would I because you're simple-minded. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you're easily pleased. It's, quite, it's written all over your big face. Don't but stand listen. <laughs> it's written all over my big face. What, in big writing, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you're easily <thick> pleased. <laughs> Let's have a listen to your last <laughs> noise. <laughs> Sharon, would you like that again? Yes, I didn't quite hear it. <laughs> Can we have more of a clue? More of a clue it is from a massive TV show that was on over the summer. Is it Lost? Is it the, the monster summer. farting? <laughs> <laughs> After he eats one of the people. <laughs> I'm sure you were offered it, Denise, and turned it down. Oh, oh, yeah, we know what it was, yeah, yeah. Oh, we know, I know, I know, yeah. Oh, this was a great moment. This was very fun. OK. What have you all put? Let's have a look. Jonathan and Sharon? Right, well, look, it's a bit of a mess, but it says at the top, Rebecca... Celebrity Island lose, Celebrity Love Island. It was Rebecca Lou's when she was all flirty with Callum Best, and he'd go, yeah, all right, mate, it's all good, mate. And then she, <laughs> she fired and he went, oh, man, that made me sick, mate. And then <laughs> he, he didn't want to go out with her anymore. <laughs> so one minute he was hot, and I think he was just looking for an excuse to stop going out with her. He was all over. He hadn't even mentioned her tash. And then, <laughs> out of town, and then he went, oh, man, that's disgusting, mate. I don't like that, mate. All right, mate, it's all good, mate. You're right, of course. Thank you. It was Rebecca Lou's on the Celebrity Love Island. You've got Celebrity Love Island. We did, but I, I sort of whispered uh, to David yeah. and Callum Best, I was, and he. I wrote Karen Best. All right, <laughs> finish writing Karen Best I because was the thing. I trying to explain to him but what happened. I d I d you see, I'm, I now realise, of course, that Callum Best is a person, whereas Karen Best. Well, <laughs> there probably is a Karen Best Karen somewhere. Karen Dada Best. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, okay. So that's all a bit of a fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Uh, Gordon and Rob, you've gone for old yep. big brother McCruick yeah. farting. I'm sure he makes a similar noise, <laughs> but that's not what we're looking for. Damn. Let's have a look at that clip. You stop with that. Did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> I just farted, sorry. <laughs> I had the most embarrassing night of my life last night. We were all sitting around the table. And anyway, um... So, and I farted. <laughs> Oh, my God, that's made me sick. <laughs> God, that's the most embarrassing night in her life. She farted. <laughs> oh, big deal. Wait till you shit yourself. <laughs> Before we all join in, can I just check she's not a surprise guest about the company? <laughs>
Because it might be. Ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Lou. Poor thing, though. It's hard. We've all let one out, surprisingly, at, you know, inopportune moments. OK? You wouldn't want it televised, would you? You wouldn't want it to go no. out. You know, I mean, I know, I know she maybe is someone who we think perhaps morally is questionable. But to actually, you know, float an air biscuit live on TV. <laughs> that wasn't an air biscuit. That was a fucking log. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at the end of part four, it's time to look at the scores. Sharon and Jonathan have 29 points. Denise and David have 20 points. Gordon and Rob have 21. Well, time for another break. I'll see you in September, which is about two minutes away. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year 2005. Let's refresh our memories about September and October. America set about dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Now, my favourite thing about Hurricane Katrina, and I know it's wrong to have a list, <laughs> was the fact that it was a natural disaster, often referred to as an act of God. And after this act of God, they had a day of prayer. Day of prayer for an act of God. How exactly does that prayer go? Dear Lord, what the bloody hell was that all about? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Britney Spears had a son by caesarean section, presumably to avoid the paparazzi waiting outside the front exit. <laughs> The former Met Police Commissioner, Lord Stevens, claimed in his autobiography that former Home Secretary David Blunkett stabbed him in the back. In fairness, he didn't mean to. He was trying to open a letter. <laughs> and on the eve of the new Wallace and Gromit movie, Aardman Animation's warehouse burnt down, causing an estimated £3 million worth of publicity. <laughs> Time for a bit more quiz, I think. Yes. This month, model Kate Moss's cocaine habit was splashed across the papers. Some companies decided to drop her from their campaigns. Name two of the hypocritical fashion tossers. <laughs> Gordon, Rob, what are you giggling about? Yeah, because we, 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 we know one of them, and we, but then we didn't know the other. And we thought it was quite a little sweet little moment. Um, <laughs> Denise Van Outen, you're going to have to help David Mitchell here. I've done, I've done it. We're sorted, don't worry. He's not all about the fashion. <laughs> OK, question number two. In a historic meeting of 150 world leaders at the United Nations, okay. what did George Bush write on a note to Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice? Well, how would we know that? <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next question. Why was the in-flight entertainment on JetBlue flight 292 from Los Angeles to New York not very entertaining? Oh, I know. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> David and Denise, any ideas? Some ideas, but no knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> OK. At the press conference to announce Daniel Craig as the new James Bond, the actor's daredevil entrance on a speedboat was slightly spoiled by what accessory? Gordon Ramsay, you wouldn't make a bad Bond. Yeah. yeah. I think you could carry that off. Yeah, I love Aston Martins and eating well. Aston Martins eating well. Um, the ladies. <laughs> Actually, Sharon will make a great Bond villain. I don't think we've had a good villain next. Can you imagine her with a little white cat out going, mm, yes, eight points, Chico. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Let's remind ourselves now of the sporting highlight of the year. Well, to ask the question, here's Ashes hero, Kevin Peterson. Hi, I'm Kevin Peterson. What did I do 14 times during the Ashes? David, you look confident in this. He's very confident. I, I, I've got... I, I, th I might know. Are you a cricket fan, David? You know, I, I did watch the Ashes. Happen. See, we don't know much about it, and so far, what we've both suggested is... First of all, Sharon said, fell over, right? <laughs> then he said, hit the ball. 14 times, he hit the ball 14 times. Are we close? He certainly hit the ball 14 times. That wouldn't be the answer. Possibly answers. more. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I'll give you a clue. It's to do with goals. Goals? <laughs> he scored 14 hat-tricks. 
I was, it's not, there's no such thing as a goal in cricket. Oh. Except in general, your career in cricket might have a goal. A goal <laughs> to win. <laughs> to win. To play for your country. Yes. You know. Okay, next question. Which well loved character was introduced this year in Arab speaking countries as Omar Shamshoon? He's probably the, the, the most well loved comedy that. character. There you go. There's comedy your, character. There's your clue. <laughs> We're guessing this. Right, OK, on to the answers. Question number one. Kate Moss, the waif-like supermodel and girlfriend of Pete Doherty, was caught taking cocaine. It's always the ones you least expect, isn't it? <laughs> I asked you which companies dropped her. What have you got? We've got Rimmel, which I believe is actually Rimmel, but they say it posh these days, Rimmel. Uh, we've got Chanel, we've got Burberry, and we've got H&M. We think it was all of them. We think we gave you a very complete answer there, Carl. <laughs> OK. We only had you to give two. You, you said, said two. two. I said two, yeah. Yep. You've got Chanel and H&M. Well, I can't fault you, that's absolutely right. Yep. Uh, uh, you've got Burberry and We've H&M. Got Burberry and H, it's actually H. H&M. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, H. I don't mean it in a... You're not mean, it's understandable. <laughs> but just for anybody... If there's any children watching, <laughs> right. I'd hate them to go around thinking All it's right, pronounced All right, sheep shagger. <laughs> <laughs> Never been proved. <laughs> OK, well, uh, Sharon and Jonathan, you can definitely have a point, but Rimmel, uh, Rimmel, Calvin Klein and Pirelli kept her on. Right. The rest let her go. I would have accepted any combination of Burberry, Chanel, H&M and H. Hello. Stern. Jimmy, Jimmy, H. Stern. <laughs> Sorry, H. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Did I mispronounce that? You're better than that, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> OK, what did George Bush write to Condoleezza Rice during a meeting at the UN. We guessed, pass the Pringles, please. <laughs> OK. Denise? I need to go to the bathroom. That is the correct answer. And Rob <laughs> and Gordon went for, no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he actually wrote, I think I may need a bathroom break. Could have been worse, could have been Georgie go pee-pee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, question three. Why was the in-flight entertainment on that JetBlue flight not very entertaining? Rob Brydon, go on. We know, because they were having to make an emergency landing and it was being shown on the local news channels, which were being shown on the in-flight entertainment, oh. so they could watch as they made the approach for the potentially fatal landing. That is the correct answer, but I love your answer, David and Denise. <laughs> You've they were put... showing an episode of Lost. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I do like Lost, but I wouldn't want to watch Lost on a plane. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I feel a bit awkward. We put, uh, they were watching themselves in trouble, or I put they were watching 8 out of 10 cats. <laughs> that, little dig, me... that little dig has cost you a point. Is that a dig? <laughs> I don't think that was necessarily a dig. what the answer don't was. Give them a point. You messed it up. OK, so you guess they're watching themselves in trouble. I don't think that's enough to give you a point, I'm afraid. A car? Oh, what's wrong with you? Well, I think when you put that together with the 8 out of 10 cats comment, you, you get nothing. <laughs> uh, next question was, what slightly marred Daniel Craig's big 007 entrance? Wearing a life jacket yep. or buoyancy aid. <laughs> <laughs> He's quite specific, isn't he, Gordon? <laughs> Very. <laughs> he really is. OK, Denise and David, what did you have? Uh, we don't know, but we put... Uh, he got his bow tie caught on a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, if he's arriving in a speedboat, jumps out, lots of press there, one could have got caught under, he's half-throttling himself, the journalist panics, <laughs> there's a tussle, electric shock because of the water in the microphone. <laughs> um, one dead actor. There you go. There are thousands more, so it's fine. <laughs> but it's sad for the family. <laughs> Was it that? <laughs> no. Oh, well. uh, Jonathan, what did you have? The life jacket? We put life jacket. We didn't put buoyancy device. We just put life jacket, but we're hoping that's enough. You are absolutely right. He was wearing a life jacket when he turned wuss. up at the press conference. What a wuss. <laughs> there has been some speculation that the Bond genre is running out of steam after the announcement of the next film's title, Tiredness Can Kill. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What did Kevin Peterson do 14 times during the Ashes? What have you got? We put... He scored 14 goals. We followed that with you We thought, first of all, he was teasing us, then we realised he was probably double-bluffing us. Yeah. We've gone with it, we think we're right. He scored 14 goals. Yes! yes. Right. Sharon, John, is that seriously your answer? Yes! <laughs> well, we won, and 14 goals sounds like the kind of number of goals you'd need to win the Ashes. How many goals did, do you think they scored overall in the Ashes? About 20, maybe, all together, both teams. <laughs> Combined, possibly. I would, I would How many players, Sharon? That? Special yeah. question, just for you. How many players on a cricket team? Oh, how many bananas on a tree, darling? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yes, you're right, it changes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David we, and... We, David. Was, it, was it hit a six? Did he hit at 14 sixes? Or maybe hit more? I that is know. the correct answer. Oh. Gordon, you... Well, yeah. 14 sixes. Fantastic, yeah, you're absolutely right. Let's go to Kevin Peterson to hear his version of events. I hit 14 sixes. <laughs> Cleared that up then. He, he really makes an anecdote out of it, doesn't he? <laughs> Settle around the fireside and let me tell you. Oh, I'm, am I the only one who can't wait to see him on Parky? <laughs> is, are you saying he's not coming on your show? Fucking right, he's not. <laughs> okay. I asked you who was known as Omar Shamshoon in Arab speaking countries. Gordon Ramsay, what did you put? Uh, well, um, I thought of Harry Potter, but then Rob said no, Charlie Chaplin. Because you said it was a comedy character. Well, I know the Arab world are behind, but I think <laughs> Chaplin must have hit the Arab world before now. Sharon and Jonathan are West. laughing uproariously at their wrong answer. What did you guys put? We, we guessed, OK, but I think we've got to be... I'm, I'm sure we're in with a good chance here. We put Mr Bean. You put Mr Bean and Denise and we've David? We've got Homer Simpson. You're right. Yes. Oh. So the answer is Homer Simpson is going to be known as Omar Shamshoon in the Arab version of The Simpsons. The other difference is Marge gets stoned to death at the end of every episode. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we've got a bonus round for you now. We have two mystery guests. Their names became well-known this year. Teams, you can ask them as many questions as you want within a minute and you have to try and deduce who they are and why they were in the news. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for our first mystery guest. Hello, sir. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Now, teams, yes. you have one minute to ask this gentleman <laughs> questions in order to deduce who he is huh? and why he was in the news this year. We, we have an unfair advantage, because didn't you audition for Sharon in the early stages <laughs> of The X Factor? <laughs> no. You're is your CND badge a clue to your notoriety? Yes. Was it something bad that happened to you in the news? <laughs> Would you, I think it was something bad. Would you describe it as bad? I think it was bad. Yes, I think it was, yeah. I think it was pretty bad. Despicable is how was I would it describe unfair? it. Yeah. It was very unfair. Were very you... unfair. OK. Wait. Have you ever dated Jodie Marsh? <laughs> <laughs> Did it happen in Britain or overseas? In Britain. Were you a victim of a crime? No. Was it something the state visited upon you? Uh, an no. injustice? Well, sort of. You're wearing yeah, a blue yeah. suit, but would I be right in thinking that blue is not your colour of choice? Yes. Are you Pete Best, the original drummer with the Beatles? <laughs> <laughs> I think you've had enough time. Are you, are you okay. anything to do with politics? Yes. That's the final question now. Write down who you think this man is and why you think he was in the news. <laughs> Write down who you think he is and why you think he was in the news. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. OK, well, let's see what your answers were. Oh, who do you no, think no, this no. man is? W were you wrongfully thrown in prison? Well, were you in prison at any time? No. No. <laughs> he was in prison. Um, what, have, what have you got there? Uh, we, we put, um, failed to pay November's poll tax. Poll tax refused Nick. We have put that we believe him to be Walter Wolfgang, who was unfairly ejected from the Labour Party conference for heckling, I believe, Mr oh. Jack Straw. Uh, Would that be right, sir? That's right. Oh. That is absolutely right. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Walter Wolfgang. Thank you very much indeed for coming on. Let's... Let's just remind ourselves of you in action. What would you say to Mr Blair if you got a chance? Well, quite a lot. I mean, <laughs> for shouting the word nonsense during a speech by Foreign Secretary Jack Straw, the frail refugee from Nazi Germany was dragged out of the hall by men twice his size. Ladies and gentlemen, Walter Wolfgang. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a lovely guy. I mean, can, I just, can I just say, it was quite funny, you said, let's just remind ourselves of you in action. Like, <laughs> like you've just been on Celebrity Big Brother or something. Like, here are some of your best bits, mate. <laughs> well, I think it's great that he heckled. But how yeah. could they pull him like that? That you is absolutely disgraceful. It is disgraceful, is what it is. Really absolutely disgraceful. Dis OK, are you ready for another mystery guest? Yes, Ooh, please. Well, let's bring them out. Round of applause for our mystery guest. <laughs> Hello there. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. OK, let the questioning commence. You've got one minute. Does it involve foxes? <laughs> no. Do you write books? No. Are you involved in politics in some way? No. No. Are you involved in the entertainment industry? No. Is it to do with sport? No. Well, I think, I think in fairness to you, there is a connection to a sort of form of entertainment. Uh, OK, is it something you're famous for, for doing or being done to? 
Neither. Mm, no. Do you campaign? No. No. Do you have a famous pet? No. I think I think you could you could almost say you are a form of entertainment. Christ, what's going on? <laughs> okay, the clue the clue it's something to do with this lady's name. Her name. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> well, the first bit's right. Super. Super. Super, super girl. Super mum. Super duper. No, go no. on. Another guess. Superman. Soup. <laughs> soup. You didn't invent super the, the soup he served me at his <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Is it your recipe, the egg in the, the slime? <laughs> no. Something to do with your name. Something to do with your name. Sue, your name Sue. Is Sue. Are you Sue Ryder of, of the famous shops? <laughs> Are you Sue Barker? <laughs> it's a namesake thing, and it's to do with one of the big crazes of 2005. You're your Sue, Sue Doku! Doku. <laughs> <laughs> Sue Doku. <laughs> Am I right? Write it down, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not fair. They would never have got that if I hadn't oh, said it. Bloody got it. Well, if they don't get it now, there'll be a shock. <laughs> well, Ooh, let's have a look at what you've written. It's tense. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you've all got that right, haven't you? Yes. Well, Sue Jockey. Well, now... I know how you feel, Sue. You, you, <laughs> sh you should meet a very good friend of mine, Travel Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sue Jockey. Right, and the scores are Sharon and Jonathan have 33 points, way off in the lead. Uh, Denise Van Outen and David Mitchell have 25 points. Gordon Ramsay and Rob Brydon have 26 points. Well, we're going to take a break now as Gordon has promised to teach us some brand new swear words back in a bit. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year, and finally we reach the end of 2005. Your questions for November and December are coming up shortly, but first, let me remind you what happened all those days ago. <laughs> there were riots on the streets of Paris. The French authorities were thrown into turmoil. They didn't know whether to collaborate or surrender. <laughs> In the end, they used a water cannon to disperse the rioters. Quick, Pierre, if we're not careful, we'll be washed. <laughs> Gay couples were given permission to legally take one another up the aisle. <laughs> That'll make a change. I do worry about gay marriage. It will inevitably lead to gay divorce. And that will be bitchy. <laughs> David Cameron won the Tory leadership by beating off David Davis. <laughs> They've got their traditions. <laughs> In Hemel Hempstead, an oil facility exploded. Police have advised people to avoid Hemel Hempstead. Mind you, they were saying that before. <laughs> So, to quote Gaza at breakfast, it's time for the sixth round. <laughs> <laughs> OK, question number one. I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with the marvellous News in Briefs feature in The Sun. Yes. In case you didn't know, page three isn't degrading anymore because now they ask the girls to comment on current affairs. <laughs> Can you guess who Danny, 18 from Coventry, is talking about? There's no denying his abilities. It was a typical gesture of his to resign for the sake of his cabinet colleagues. But in doing so, the government is a far poorer place. Who was Danny, 18 from Coventry, talking about with her top off? Hey, I, I like that feature, but my favourite feature is, I don't know if you've seen it in the Daily Sport, they have um, a topless lady, a glamour model, review that night's movies. There was a great one once, it was a, 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 you know, a sexy lady with no clothes on, and she was reviewing 12 Angry Men, and then we went, loads of men locked in a room all night, for my idea of a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the classic courtroom dramas. <laughs> OK. And while we're on the subject of the sun, what made their campaign against domestic violence suddenly seem rather ironic? Yeah. yeah. OK. Question number three. What appalling idea did Tony Blair talk George Bush out of, according to a rumour that surfaced this month? Surely there's quite a long list of them, though, I imagine. I should imagine Bush is always coming up with weird rumours, isn't he? I bet he's going, I know, let's spend some money developing a fish with three eyes. I bet he, you know, just treats it like a toy box. Let's make a soup out of spinach and an egg, see if anyone's stupid enough to... You know, silly ideas he would come up with on a regular basis that no sane person would consider. <laughs> he was the only person that night. In you know, you liar. That, you know, not very pleasant. No, a few other people. I think they should be... But they're all scared of you, they're scared of you, that's the thing. <laughs> see, and most like... of your food is rubbish, but everyone's scared to tell you because you're scared <laughs> of it. <laughs> I'm joking. 
Duncan, he's one of the best chefs in the country. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's like saying that uh, Jonathan Ross has a cool, appealing dress code. Thank you. It's out there, it's wacky, <laughs> it's obscure, it's bizarre. It looks like a fucking lollipop. <laughs> With Lady. an egg in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Disability groups were up in arms about the name given to a new wheelchair launched oh. by a US company. What was its horribly tasteless name? It was something horrible. I vaguely remember this, don't I? It's an incredible name. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable as a name for a wheelchair. <laughs> yes, it was something like that. Uh, it's that horrible. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking, it's that horrible. Actually, it might not be as horrible as what you're thinking. <laughs> OK. Gary Glitter was arrested by the Vietnamese authorities. What is the maximum penalty he might face? Death, the bastard. <laughs> He should cut his goonies off as well. Well, only if Wales beat England. <laughs> On now to the answers for November and December. Who was page three lovely Danny talking about? Uh, Gordon, what do you think? Uh, Blunkett. You're absolutely right. David Blunkett. David Blunkett. Excellent. Yeah. You all got that right? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Well done, you. Yeah. Okay. It just goes to prove that Danny knows her stuff. Because we all got it and we all agree with her. So how wrong of us to judge her just because she chose not to wear a shirt in public? <laughs> I think more young women should go around without shirts <laughs> and earn their respect in that manner. OK, I asked you why the Sun's anti-domestic violence campaign suddenly seemed rather ironic. <laughs> what have you got? Rebecca Wade, she's the editor, is that right, of the yeah. Sun? And then and she, she, called... she hit Ross Kemp. Well, that's the correct answer. This was the story, anyway, that uh, Rebecca Wade uh, hit Ross Kemp, allegedly. <laughs> the charges were, of course, dropped. Uh, I asked you, what did Tony Blair allegedly have to talk Bush out of? What did you put? Uh, I remember this. It was uh, because recently, of course. Oh. Uh, it was he wanted to bomb Al Jazeera, the news source that comes out you of the... You are yeah. absolutely right. Al Jazeera are, of course, based in Qatar, and they're an ally of the US, so wouldn't have been a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah, that's you got that absolutely right. That's what we thought. And <laughs> Gordon Ramsay and Rob Brydon went for the, um, the other conversation <laughs> that we're not privy to. Yes, this was on a note passed to Condoleezza Rice. <laughs> Bombo bicycle. Not many people know about it, but he was quite intent on bombing Iran. <laughs> now, Gordon, didn't Tony Blair come for his birthday to your restaurant? Yes, that's right, yeah. yeah, in the kitchen. Had an amazing time. I would because you've got an actual little table in the kitchen, haven't you? Yeah, you know, like a chef table. And they had the most amazing uh, time. But the weird scenario, of course, was the bodyguards outside. Both of them were vegetarians. <laughs> I bet they got nothing. They got absolutely fuck all. <laughs> right. Um, the name of the wheelchair that caused so much controversy. We guessed. We guessed. Is it really is offensive? It, is it Spasmobile? <laughs> it's, it's, well, you may laugh. It's not the Spasmobile. What did you have done? It was either something like that we put down, Cripple Cart, or <laughs> the Mongimobile, or Spazzy. Because it was something like that. It was one of those horrible things. You think, well, how can they see, say something like that? But that's what they put. It was something like Cripple Cart. Gordon, what did you go for? Cripple Mobile. Cripple Mobile. Like mobile. The <laughs> the cripple Mobile. Cri cripple Mobile is a new phone service. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the actual answer, I, I mean, unbelievably, I think, the actual answer is they called it the Spaz. <gasps> oh, well, we're pretty close, a Spasmobile. David and Denise have got to get a point for the uh, Thank Spasmobile. You. Yeah, and you don't get anything for your... What was your guess again, Gordon? Oh, the Cripple Mobile, <laughs> yes. Now, you may think that's as bad as it gets, but let me read you a small section from the press release. And it won't cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and finally, what is the maximum penalty Gary Glitter might face? Yeah. Death. Firing squad. Shot Fire, to firing squad is technically the exact right answer. Shot okay. to death, yes. Shot to uh, death. Four points and his licence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, though, if they do shoot him, what a great bit of telly. <laughs> Just saying, I'd watch. Um, God, I'd watch too, and stick a hot poker down the end of his willy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can do that if you press the red button. <laughs> uh, if Maybe you want you to can. add to his torment, go interactive now. <laughs> OK, it's time for our final bonus round. <laughs> we felt it was important for our very last bonus round to be weighty, profound and, above all, intellectually challenging. And then we changed our minds. <laughs> Brace yourselves for the reality TV round. What TV incident are these celebrities commenting on? Yeah, it was definitely a, a highlight or a, a kind of low light for some people, I don't know, but um, interesting. Bloody heck, no, that's really bad for the kids to watch. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I thought it was funny. I'd laugh. I was watching and I was just so shocked that she was actually doing it. I was kind of like, she's putting up. We only saw the stills on the internet, which was probably the best option, because there was no way on earth I'd want to watch that live. I was disgusted. I couldn't believe they put it out on air. I thought it was a perfect example 
of somebody in the throes of alcoholic stupor doing something that they will so regret the next day. I just thought of her poor parents. Yeah, I did too. Oh, I missed that one. Missed that. Yeah, it sounds good. You don't have it on tape or anything, you know. It was one of those ones where you go, she's not, she's not, she bloody is. Would I hell? No, and I wouldn't want to be drinking out of it afterwards either. OK, answers, please. What were they all talking about? Uh, but Sharon thinks I've made this up, but I think... <laughs> no, this it's is... true. What, have you... Gordon, you OK? <laughs> Did you see this? Uh, no, I heard about it. OK, let's have a look at your answers. You've got... <laughs> Jonathan, talk me through yours. Kinga wanked a wine bottle in the garden <laughs> from the big weather house. She went out with a wine bottle. She was egged on by that awful Craig. Anthony's sitting there going, Norman, Norman, don't do it. He's going, no, go on, do it. And she went out with a big old blue nun or something and sat oh. in the garden. And everyone went, oh, what's she doing? Can I freeze frame that? OK, um, that, that is the correct answer. Denise, I like the way that you've put this. Kinga putting a wine bottle up her snatch. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. It is the same thing, yeah. <laughs> this is the end of the show, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the end, it's well, the end of the Merry, Merry civilization. Christmas, baby Jesus. That's all I say. Bottle bank. I wonder if it bottled out because, as, as David is right to say, this is going. This it's Christmas, <laughs> and it was a magnum. Yeah, <laughs> it was a magnum. I, can, I don't think I can give you a point for bottled out. But well, you can't write bottles stuck because in. Because I'm not going to write the sort of thing. That... <laughs> <laughs> well, you just fucking said it, Gordon. No, we can't write it, can you? Let's have a look at the clip, please. No. Oh, God. No. God. Yeah, we've got the clip. Just let. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I'm, si I'm sitting on the wine bottle. <laughs> oh no! I'm gonna go right now and masturbate on the grass. Oh my god! Oh no! She's absolutely a lunatic. Oh no! She's wrong, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, Golden, but I was disgusted. Red wine with fish. <laughs> Let's try and raise the tone slightly. Take a look at this picture from <laughs> I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Oh, yeah, this is raising the tone, yeah. <laughs> OK, what in the name of all that is good and holy is antiques expert David Dickinson doing? Is he looking for a date on it? <laughs> is he trying to date it? <laughs> See if it's an original. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have a look at your answers. Who should we go for first? Gordon Ramsay, go on, tell us what, what have you We've got? We've written nothing in protest at the level to which this show has sunk. <laughs> <laughs> we know we you don't know, want any thought... part of this charade. <laughs> Is David Dickinson checking for termites <laughs> in his... Bollocks. ...gentleman's garden? <laughs> well, <that's... laughs> if we may be more... Gentleman's garden? <laughs> <laughs> what an image. Uh, Jonathan? We've got down David D shaving his area to stop ticks, etc. Denise Van Allen? I think he was shaving off his pubic hair to avoid... <laughs> Ticks, is that right? Oh, yes, that's what it was, yes, yes, yes. Oh, well, suddenly you know now. <laughs> <laughs> I read about it in The Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> Denise Van Allen, you are absolutely right. It was, in fact, David Dickinson giving himself a Brazilian. <laughs> Reality TV hit a new low this year when even the contestants didn't recognise each other. Watch this clip of a confused Flavor Flav talking to one Dave Morgan. What's your name? Dave. Thank huh? you. What's your name? What's your name? No, what's your name, Dave? Yeah. What do you do? Come on. What do I Put do? me up on you, G. Well, what do you do, though? You're a comedian or something? No. Or? I do look like a comedian. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> look like you can, it looks like you can hold it down. Yeah, it looks like you, you can hold the audience down. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but what do you do, though? Now, my partner, my ex-partner was a soap star, so... Wait, whose partner? My ex-partner. Mike who? My ex-partner. Your ex-partner yeah. is a soap star? Yeah. Well, what I want to know is the same thing as Flavor Flav. Who is his ex-partner? He's just a horrible man. Is he a horrible man? Awful, awful, selling stories on the mother of his child. Shame on him. What is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> OK, uh, let's have a look and see what you've got for this final question. OK, Jesse Wallace is correct. Jesse Wallace is correct. I would have accepted Cat Slater from EastEnders, to be honest with you. Uh, Chuck D. We thought, because Flavor Flav used to be in Public Enemy, we thought maybe that guy used to go out with Chuck D from Public Enemy. <laughs> maybe it was a double bluff to put him in there. It wasn't, though, was it? 
Do I get nothing for making Jesse Wallace and Gromit quite entertaining? <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas. I put Jesse Wallace and Gromit. Oh, well, right. <laughs> well, that's the end of the questions for the Big Fat Quiz of the Year 2005. Time to tot up the scores at home. If you scored more than 45, congratulations, you're all Jamie's School Dinner's winners. If you scored between 35 and 45, you did Catherine Tate, great. Between 25 and 35, Tony Blair, fair. Between 15 and 25, Jude Law, poor. And if you scored less than 15, you are a James Blunt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see how our teams did. In reverse order, Gordon Ramsay and Rob Ryden, you got 30 points. <laughs> Denise Van Allen and David Mitchell, 33 points. Congratulations. You closed in on them, but in the end, they won it. Sharon Osbourne and Jonathan Ross have won the Big Fat Quiz wow. of the Year. Wow. Wow. And they get this resplendent <laughs> trophy. Oh. Look at that. Oh. Yeah, that's a proper trophy. Look at that. Look at what you've won. Oh, that Fantastic. Crisis is filled with Ramsay's soup. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for the Big Fat Quiz of the Year 2005. Our thanks to Sharon Osbourne, Jonathan Ross, Denise Van Outen, David Mitchell, Gordon Ramsay and Rob Ryden. I've been Jimmy Carr. <laughs> Good night.